uh, to the exceptional conservative show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the Socialist. So glad that you could be with us tonight. We have a very, very uh, big schedule of guests coming on tonight, of course. Pete, no conservative oh, show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the... Thank you. I'm so good. I got to repeat myself twice. <laughs> In fact, I have... Getting ready to go into our uh, huge chat yes. room uh, at the exceptional conservative show dot com. Uh, the short intro for a very important reason, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, I received news before going on the air tonight uh, that a family friend uh, suffered a great loss this particular day. Um, I can't reveal her name just yet as the police have not revealed it and I haven't gotten permission from uh, the mother uh, of the child. I, I received this in terms of um, notice from family friend um, that young woman who had been working with me for a number of years in variant uh, roles. Uh, for one of which was uh, tax services, uh, volunteer tax services, lost her daughter today. Unfortunately, the baby, and we all see our children as babies, the 28-year-old was killed. Uh, she was shot to death um, today in Bel Air, Maryland. Now, I, I say this to you, as I do not want to reveal any other information I know about this particular case, as I am um, just receiving it, and not, not, vi not verified by the family itself, and I want to do that. But I want to say to her dearly uh, that Mrs. Biggs and I love you, um, we understand exactly what you're going through tonight. We understand your pain. We understand that someone decided to be judge and jury of your daughter's life and take it. Uh, we understand that God has the final will and final thought on all things eternal and ever present. And I want you to know that God is here to comfort you, to love you, to shed your tears with you, to wipe your tears from your face and to give you a start of a new life. It is not natural for a parent to have to bury a child but I want you to know that God sees, God knows, and God gives justice. And I want you to know that we are here, Mrs. Biggs and I are here for you, whatever you need. We love you. We give our condolences to your loss. And we will be faithful to make certain that justice is served. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how we get this started because we have a very special guest coming up in just a few. Pete Sepp. Um, we pledge allegiance to the United States of America. Forgive me, no tie tonight or whatever. I, I, I didn't even change anything. After I heard the news, I, I couldn't even change anything. So, ah, forgive me. Not how CA, CEO operates, but gosh darn it, I'm a very unnatural one to begin with. <laughs> I want you to find a flag behind you for those on live stream beside you and I want you uh, without doubt and I'm going to say this uh, Miss Deborah if you could put in the clip in the chat roll so people can uh, spread that we have new technology people can spread that story around on Twitter and also on Facebook and you can find it at open heart closed case uh, I just put that out there also at the exceptional conservative show Facebook page uh, Exceptional Conservative Network Facebook page and also American Conservative Nation, AC Nation page and my own Facebook page. 
Uh, we want the killer to be found, and we want justice. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, put your right hand over your heart. Let's pledge allegiance to the United States of America. so great to hear our children lead us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, Dave Milner, Electro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us get Pete Sepp on the line right now. Okay. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Seth. This is Ken McClinton. You are live on the Exceptional Conservative Show from Washington, D.C. Glad to be here. Awesome. Glad to have you here. Uh, Mr. Seth, uh, as president of the National Taxpayers Union, uh, I have to ask you, uh, what, aren't you surprised that we aren't talking about a tax reform bill on the House floor tonight? Oh, I don't think we should be too surprised. After all, Congress has only been meeting for the better part of three, now four weeks. There's been a lot of other legislation that's had to be cleared from the deck, such as repeal of Obamacare, certain Congressional Review Act resolutions of regulations that the Obama administration passed in its final few weeks. Those are all important, too. And... Our primary goal right now, and I think Senator Hatch, actually, the chairman of the Finance Committee, said this beautifully last week. We don't want to give the mainstream media the story that Republicans are fighting other Republicans over differences in tax reform plans. we got to have some discussions about some of the particulars, some of that in public, some of that between committee and staffers here in Washington, D.C., and come together and hopefully even involve some Democrats in this process, especially on the Senate side. Well, uh, Pete, I want to thank you so much for being on the air today. I want to get that question out first because, as you know, there is much to do uh, within the 495, 695, 295 corridor, and the Democrats are doing everything they can to show how illegitimate and incompetent and inadequate the Trump administration is, and likewise, you stated uh, that they're only three weeks into this particular thing. I, I mean, we're not part of the Red Sea here. It's going to take a little time. But uh, in, in relationship to tax reform, can you tell everybody what the National Taxpayers Union is all about? Sure. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan citizen group working for lower taxes, simpler taxes, less wasteful government spending and economic freedom at all levels. And of course, the tax system itself has everything to those factors, even spending. After all, what we raise, how we raise them is directly related to the federal budget and the deficit, how much we decide to borrow, how we choose to structure certain entitlement programs. So it's all wrapped up to and it's very important to get this done right. Many people have probably heard about this very confusing aspect of tax reform called border adjustment, whether we're going to allow our system to make goods that go overseas free of tax and goods that come in here taxable just the same as if they were made in the United States. Mm -hmm. and some confusion as to whether the Trump administration would be for or against that some confusion over whether Senate Republicans would support it since House Republicans proposed it. We just have to take a deep breath mm -hmm. 
and realize that there are going to be all kinds of different economic analyses of how this is going to work. We've got to sort them out, and we can come together on this issue and move forward with a plan. It's, again, I think Senator Hatch is right here. What they're trying to do is trip up Trump and his spokespeople into making some kind of conflict with Republicans in the House over tax reform when there may not be one. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, are locked into CNN and MSNBC and many of the network stations uh, because they've always listened to them. And what we're hearing is, uh, despite what uh, Senator Hatch has said, uh, that there may not be a tax bill on the table until late in the fall of this year or the late of the uh, close of this particular year. Uh, and, and how is it that people don't hear Pete Sepp and others uh, who are giving the truth about what's happening on Capitol Hill? Uh, is, is, that, is that by design, you might think? Some of it's by design. I think another part of it is the natural skepticism of the media over plans that might with some of the long-held values they have. Uh, not all of them. It's certainly not monolithic, but there are some, uh, and many actually, in the media who are saying, well, you can't undo Obamacare yep. without, uh, <laughs> without some kind of very, very similar replacement. Well, there are going to be replacement programs. Uh, there was never really an agenda to just get rid of it and say to everybody, as of April 1st this year, you're all on. No. And here again, this is something that's taking time. Were some Republicans perhaps overly ambitious and thinking they'd have a replacement plan ready to go or passed by March 1st or the first 100 days of the administration? Sure. But that doesn't mean they can't have something in the first half of this year. And when you clear the decks of some of those issues, you also pave the way to make a deal on tax reform. I happen to think that the Ways and Means Committee and the Finance Committee, the two big tax writing committees, they have a role in determining how some of the Obamacare taxes are going to be transitioned and phased out, but they can work largely on tax reform starting now and probably have what's called a legislative discussion draft before tax filing day in April, that's going to lead to legislation probably by or around Memorial Day. The two chambers will debate over their summer sessions, and then we might have something for the president to sign. Now, so basically what we were saying last year, and since the election, because a lot of people on the, on the right side as well are a little, you know, uh, excessively uh, uh, ecstatic, uh, and they believe, like under the Obama administration, that things are going to get passed right away, that by June this year, everything will be done, we will be back to a capitalist structure, uh, and that just doesn't work on Capitol Hill, because the president doesn't make the laws, he's supposed to execute them. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct, and certainly the president has a lot of input into the laws, and just as the Reagan administration helped to be a catalyst for tax reform by telling the Treasury Department, study the options, work with the committee staffs on Capitol Hill to figure out the art of the possible, the Trump administration can and should do that with Congress. Again, though, it took a while. It took the better part of two and a half years, really, to get tax reform done under the Reagan administration. Thank you. Ronald Reagan, in, in 1984, told the Trump get going on studying the options, and it wasn't until the fall of 1986 that it became reality. Exactly. Exactly. In the Obama administration, began working on Obamacare in January. It didn't get passed until December at midnight on Christmas Eve. Uh, before they were able yes. to offer that monstrosity of a, a terrible piece of socialism. So it's going to take time. So, uh, Pete, I, I want you to tell America, 
what is it that we should be saying to our fellow American after the exuberance of the election and the inauguration and everyone's ecstatic? What should we be telling them at this point regarding tax reform? We should be telling them that serious progress is being made right now. Look at what we agree on already. We agree that the number of tax brackets on the individual side has to be streamlined. Some say it should mm -hmm. go down to one bracket. Others say two or three. But we're very, very solid on that principle. We also know that tax rates have to come especially on the business side. Currently, amongst all of the plans, we're looking at somewhere between a 15 and 20 percent rate for the corporate tax. So we're pretty much in agreement on where that has to go. We also know virtually every tax reform plan, wherever it's originating, says get rid of the death tax. Yes. Reduce the capital gains tax. Get rid of the very complicated expensing schedules for small and large businesses and something simpler. All of those principles are already agreed upon by virtually all of the major players in tax reform. Now we have to start worrying about things like border adjustment, like phase-outs or phase-ins. How are we going to reduce rates? while broadening the base and limiting deductions and rules at the same time. Those are not insurmountable questions. They just have to be gone through section by section. Exactly. Now, I, I want to talk with you regarding the corporate tax for, for a moment. And tonight, we have the great privilege and honor talking with Pete Sepp, who is the uh, president of the National Taxpayers Union. If you're not uh, subscribing to their newsletters. If you're not hearing from them, uh, this is how you do it. You go directly to ntu.org. It's very simple. ntu.org. Sign on, listen, uh, and read their materials their, and their uh, information as it comes out to you. And this is probably one of the best places you should go, period. Don't listen to the Wall Street Journal. Do not listen to uh, CNN and, and CNBC. Don't listen to them. Go directly to NTU. You'll get the information straight and you'll know exactly what's going on in the process of tax reform in America. Uh, now, in terms of corporate taxes, in Russia, the corporate tax rate is like 13%. <laughs> so, in, in Ireland, it's yes. 15%. So, if, if they can do this uh, and survive, can we lower the corporate tax rate and, by golly, survive? Where are we going to get all the revenue from? <laughs> Yes, this is one of the <laughs> falsehoods, unfortunately, that we still just constantly have to disprove year after year. Mm -hmm. Higher tax rates do not necessarily mean higher tax revenues. And it's a pretty simple test when you think about it. <laughs> if, for example, you know, the sales tax or the gas tax or the cigarette tax or goes up. What do consumers do? Well, they either find a way to get the product more cheaply, or at least as cheaply as they were before the tax was increased, or they start consuming less of it. That's a behavioral response to high tax rates, and it does not necessarily lead to higher tax revenue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Example after example, the, the luxury tax that was actually enacted under a Republican president, George H.W. Bush, turned out to be a jobs killer for companies that built yachts and dealt in furs and made luxury automobiles. And indeed, it was Democratic senators from states that built yachts who said, you've got to get rid of this tax. It's not raising any money, and it's killing off an entire industry. Now, these are lessons we have to relearn, and we have to learn the lesson that lower tax necessarily mean catastrophically lower revenues. They can result in a drop in revenues. They often do, but over time, they actually end up growing the economy, leaving more money in people's pockets to it to save, to create jobs, that produces economic growth that can allow revenues to balance out over the long term. Listen, we're talking with Pete Sepp, 
uh, and he is the president of National Taxpayers Union. It's an institution that you need to be watching and listening to during the process. In fact, to be earnest, I don't really listen to much of the news anymore. I like to go directly to the sources that make the news. Uh, NTE, NTU is one of those particular uh, sources. You mentioned the death tax or the inheritance tax or however way, whoever wants to call it whatever it is. Um, but uh, the, the bottom line is that there are people in America that say, wait a minute, uh, it's not fair that someone who did not work to earn something uh, gets a free whiff of millions of dollars of property and land. Uh, and, and quite frankly, it's wrong uh, to not tax them because they didn't, they, it's not something they created. They earned it, them, earned it through death. It's not fair. They, that, that, the fair thing to do is to tax them for what they inherited. Uh, why is that a stranglehold on capitalism in America? Well, unfortunately, passing along a through a family structure to heirs is not an easy thing to do in the first place. You have to make sure all the books are in order that perhaps the people who inherit the business have the skills to continue it. And, you know, there are cases of ne'er-do-wells and other types who inherit a ton of money and but spend it rather than invest it into growing the business that was given or taking the money to start a new business. It happens. Unfortunately, we've got the collateral damage, the fact that you have family farms, you have medium-sized businesses that continue to struggle if they're passed along to the next generation, and you have competent heirs wanting to keep the business going and growing, and yet they face a tax rate of up to 45%, and that is our business when you think about it. Can you imagine? What, what do you do when you're faced with a tax like that and you want to continue the business? Who do you lay off? What plant do you close? What assets do you sell in order to afford that? Almost any of those decisions ends up impacting the future of the exactly. business to the point where the business isn't viable anymore. Exactly. It, it, and you, you mentioned some First and foremost, it's a grieving process that you're going through. Uh, I, I don't know why we have to be so incompassionate uh, as to uh, then allay taxes to them, uh, another grief to bear. Uh, but it hurts because you're taking over a business that you really don't have that much knowledge about. And in addition to that, you're going to have to make some tough decisions. Those decisions impact everybody's life. And then the same people who complain about that you're laying off people are the same people who are installing the taxes in the first place. Yes, and, you know, I had an interesting experience with this in December of, well, there was a rulemaking going on with the U.S. Treasury regarding how estates would be valued for tax purposes when they were closely held in a family and passed along. And this rulemaking, of course, was very technical. It uh, had all kinds of backing according to the Treasury and evidence that, well, people were gaming the system and we need to close this loophole in order to bring in a little more revenue to Washington. Well, the funny thing was, the day there was a public hearing on this rule in Washington, D.C., a huge auditorium probably could hold 300 people ended up getting almost packed with folks who weren't coming to say, yes, in the name of fairness, let's close this loophole. They were traveling from all over the country who owned family businesses and were saying, stop, before you make a huge mistake, before you shut down these businesses simply because of the tax compliance costs, before you inconvenience us with more tax planning that we'll have to go through to try and prepare for this. And we heard story after story of people who were saying, we know what the impact of this rule is going to be, and it's going to have very human losses. It was really an incredible sight. And, you know, the Treasury has at least pulled back and said, well, maybe we need to modify this rule somewhat. Mm -hmm. 
administration, the rulemaking will go away entirely. But it's a sign that people are beginning to understand the true direct impact of very complex tax law. Okay. Apparently, I, I think we've, we've dropped that particular call. i tell you what we're going to do when we come back. Um, wonderful conversation with Pete Sepp. Uh, when we come back, we're going to follow up with him, find out exactly what we can do in terms of the state of tax reform in America. We will be right back right after these messages. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show, live on the nation's capital's best conservative network, the Exceptional Conservative Network, I Plays Rock Radio, <laughs> SHR, and the Exceptional Conservative Network. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Willie Lawson of the Willie Lawson Show here okay. on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Hang in there, we'll be right with you. Friday okay, great, thanks. They okay. told me that I needed to be humble, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I decided to be awesome instead. That's the Willie Lawson Show, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. The bloviating Zeppelin. He's big-footed enough radio shows to last a lifetime, courtesy of Sean, Clint, Ken, and Jersey Joe. Now it's time for him to waddle on his own two feet via the glorious SHR media. Gird thy loins for the bloviating Zeppelin's berserk bobcat saloon. Coming soon to Ossicles near you, Excelsior. It's a love story like no other, from God's heart to yours. And for 30 years, it's been at the heart of every book, Bible, CD, gift, and resource from ChristianBook.com. Over 500,000 products, always at the very best value. ChristianBook.com. Everything Christian. Because it's our story, too. Ladies and gentlemen, we are online with Pete Sepp, who is president of the National Taxpayers Union, a site that you need to be on. It's NTU. Dot org, N-T-U, uh, dot org. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, one final question for Pete Sabin. We thank you so much. You, you're a very busy man, especially this time of year, working with the Trump uh, administration. Um, but what are the, the three things that you would like to see done that could really just boost the economy uh in terms of tax reform itself what three things have got to be done and if not done uh, you, you know we'll never get around to it the three things that have to be done are we must reduce the total overall tax rate by doing that by phasing it in we will help to grow the economy and again balance out the long-term revenue effects second thing that has to happen we need to have consistent treatment by taxes of the way income is earned by businesses large and small, regardless of what type of business you're engaged in, how many people you employ, whether you do business overseas or here at home, you should pay roughly tax rate on roughly the same amount of income. Yep. That's a solid principle we need to reaffirm, and we have to stop punishing U.S. companies, large and small, for doing business overseas by double taxing their income. We've got to get rid of that. Third thing we have to do, we have the tax administration. That means actually taking a look at how the IRS writes all of these regulations, how we require business to comply with all of these horrible depreciation schedules, mm -hmm. how we measure the compliance burden on individuals just to fill out a tax return because the loss to our economy from our tax system is not just because of high rates or punitive treatment of certain types of income. It's how much time, effort, and lost economic opportunity we consume just figuring out how to pay taxes. Listen, Pete, there, there are people who 
want to know more uh, with an unbiased, uh, uncomplicated access uh, to news and information, why should they choose NTU and how can they choose it in the future? The reason they should choose NTU is because we are the taxpayers' lobbyists. We, of course, work with citizens to make their voices heard, but each and every day we have it of 11 people here in Washington who go to Capitol Hill and talk with the lawmakers, engage with the staff to figure out what's actually going on on the ground in Congress, in the administration. We're that plugged in. And so you're getting good inside information about how we as citizens move the needle on fiscal policy. You'll get all kinds of inside information about where legislation and regulations are headed and how you affect them right at the margin. So folks should visit our website at ntu.org, sign up for our email newsletter, the Taxpayers tab, and buckling for a wild ride. It's going to be a lot of ups and downs. Exactly. We're going to be there, and at the end of the ride, we're going to be better off. Exactly. But we got to be patient. That's the key thing, right? We have to be patient. That's right. All right. That's right. Exactly. Thank you, Pete. Thank you so much, Pete Sepp. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful individual he is, and a hard-working man on the American front uh, of lobbying. We thank you so much for taking time out to talk with us about the tax situation in Washington, D.C. My pleasure. Hope to chat again soon. We will. We will. Hope to see you at CPAC, too. We'll, we'll work on that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. No, right. Take care. Take care. That's Pete Sepp, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And this is not the first time he's been on the air with us with the Exceptional Conservative Show. Uh, and it won't be the last time because we're going to need his insights on what's going on on Capitol Hill. He's almost there almost every day, if not every day, uh, lobbying. Uh, I have a URL for Ken. Listen, Professor, here's your URL. Here, here we go. Because uh, there are lots of people that want to get in and listen uh, to the program, and I thank them so much for doing so. Uh, but Pete Sepp with NTU. National Taxpayers Union. I, I really want you this year to be more prosperous than you've ever been. Um, and I want you to know for a fact that there are people out there that are working on your behest. Uh, you may not know them personally, but they are there every single day on Capitol Hill attempting uh, to do for you often what you can't do your, for yourselves in the face of, uh, of the lawyers and the uh, others. Um, how did you get Pete Sepp? Uh, <laughs> Pete Sepp's cool. He's down with the G. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I'm telling you, and Mary knows this from the very beginning I said about this program, I do not want to go through you know, underlings or anything. And there's nothing wrong with being underling. Trust me, I've been underling before. I don't mind. Um, but if you want what's really happening, you need to go to the source. You need to go to the players. You need to go to the guy who's actually making the machine turn. And so I would encourage you with all of my heart uh, for you all uh, to make certain uh, that you get in contact with Pete Sepp. And, in fact, I'm, I'm trying to find out if they actually has a, have a Facebook page. So I go to the site itself um, in terms of... Uh, NTU and yeah, I read their stuff often. I, I want to make certain that, uh, quite frankly, uh, I, I am going to get the information that's not going to be on CNBC or any of the other ones because they already have a bias. I want y'all to understand: people have a bias already in Washington D.C. They want to blame. Uh, they want to blame President Trump. For every ill, he's only been in office three weeks at the very most. Three weeks at the very most. And they want to blame him for Nagasaki. They want to blame him for the Civil War. They want to. So that's why you cannot listen. You cannot listen to what you hear uh, on that particular uh, network, maybe that you're listening to. And I'm going to put their contact information in. 
uh, for you that you may follow up with their staff. Uh, they're very gracious people, and they really want the best for America. And they want the capitalism to be released upon the earth. How do you do that? You got to lower taxes, and you got to take the burdens off of people. Uh, no man runs a 100 meter race with bricks on his shoes. No, the lighter you are, the more productive you will be. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk with you uh, before we speak with Janice Hall uh, about a few things. And I hope you stay there. And for those of you who are attempting to find out where we are, just go to the show.com, click on the TECS tab, and then when you get there, uh, and, and, and Mary, whatever you do, do not tell the professor that I listened to his show tonight in full. And I appreciate the fact that he gave a shout out about our show. Don't tell him that I actually listened uh, <laughs> uh, in promo for the show. Uh, but uh, when we come back, I want to talk with you about a number of issues and things uh, that are very, very important to me and I hope important to you. We'll be right back with more of the best right after these messages. Meet Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time-consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media, and analyze results, sign up with eClincher today. Ladies and gentlemen, I need for you all to do me a great favor at this point. All the men, please get your cigarette lighter together as well as your cigarettes. Prepare to go outside on the front porch after you listen to this wonderful, wonderful <laughs> commercial. Hi, it's your business diva here, Melanie Collette of Money Talk with Melanie on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., we talk all things money on a global, domestic, and household scale that affects you and your wallet. You don't want to miss it. Is your PC causing major headaches? Now there's an easy way to make your computer run like new again. Introducing System Mechanic, America's number one PC performance software. System Mechanics scans your entire PC for over 200 different types of errors. It then automatically fixes even the most stubborn and frustrating PC problems, restoring full speed and stability in minutes. Visit runlikenew.com to try it free. Good. Hello, I'm Donovan Larkins, pastor of Spirit of Life Christian Center in Dayton, Ohio. But I'm also the director of Shekinah Ranch and the Shekinah Ranch Protecting Innocence Campaign. And today I want to just share with you some of our materials that we've developed so that you can, you too can be part of promoting prevention, education, and safety awareness to you. We have now our, our Protecting Innocence t-shirt. Uh, it's a powerful marquee or billboard that you can purchase and wear yourself that brings awareness that children need advocacy. Uh, it's a powerful, powerful piece. Uh, it's simply a picture of that with this marquee here with, uh, with some additional wording on it. And you will want to be a part of that. 
Uh, we have posters that any of you pastors or any of you community centers, you may want to uh, obtain some of these posters and post in the recreation center. It would be great to post this in the foyer of your church. It would be awesome for you to post this throughout the schools of, of, uh, of your community. Involvement is what's necessary. Involvement is what makes a difference. Uh, we know that in order for evil to triumph, all that is necessary is for good men and women to do nothing. And then we have these little marquees. You can take, you can order a hundred of them, you can order 50 of them, and you can pass them around to your family. You can pass them around at a family event or a local event that you're going to be at a festival or something. These are very handy. They're very cost efficient and they make a powerful statement. They really make an impact. And then we have our protecting innocence um, ribbon. And in this package, it's not only just the ribbon, but it also has a message, a safety awareness message, actually a tip. Uh, and the tip encourages parents to exercise scrutiny with the relationships that your children are involved with. Today, we see more and more children being victimized by teachers, by uh, coaches, and by other people, other supposedly trusted individuals. And we have to prepare our children if we plan for them to be safe. And then you will want to be involved with the overall Protecting Innocence campaign because we're making plans right now to build a, re a retreat recovery center on our 150-acre campus where Shekinah Ranch is, is housed. And you can get this brochure. We can, we can email it to you. Uh, that way there's no cost associated with it so that you can learn how you can join our Protecting Innocence teams. We are communicating with people globally, all over the world, that are interested in how together we can protect children from dirty, evil child molesters. We love to have you on board. We need your support. We want your prayers and we welcome your financial contributions. Again, I'm Donovan Larkins, Shekinah Ranch Protecting Innocence Campaign. And by the way, camps are coming. So call us so that you can register your child at 937-422-6029. We'll see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for tuning in tonight to the Exception Consider Show live for the nation's capital. Uh, listen, there is so much going on. Okay. There is so much going on in our community. Uh, and it can get scary sometimes. And a lot of people think that only bad things happen to bad people in bad neighborhoods. But Act up. I want to let you all know, ladies and gentlemen, that there are things going on around us. And that's why we do what we do in terms of uh, Shekinah Ranch. I want to play this yeah, for I you. I know a lot of my neighbors here. You know, it's really surprising to hear somebody got shot right in front of the residence here. Concerned neighbors react after the Hartford County Sheriff's Office found a woman shot to death in the parking lot of this apartment complex in the 200 block of Clark's Ridge Court in Bel Air Tuesday morning. I'm kind of surprised and I wasn't expecting it in Bel Air. I just moved into here in August and I thought it was really safe. So I'm kind of freaked out. Deputies say just before 6 a.m. they received multiple 911 calls for shots fired. When they arrived, they found the victim, who at this point they are only describing as a 28-year-old African-American woman. Investigators wanted to make it clear that there is no threat to the community. I can tell you it does not appear to be, it doesn't appear to be a random act of violence in the community. This appears to be a directed assault. 
As far as a motive, investigators say they got a call for service to the victim's address back in January, but it was not domestic related. As this case continues to unfold, investigators will look into a domestic situation, but simply aren't sure what they're dealing with yet. The initial assumptions is possibly something like that, just based on the circumstances, but we have no exact information or leads to suggest that, that is definitely the case yet. So it's too early to say. So detectives in this case, as you can see, need all the help they can get. Anyone with information on this case should call the Hartford County Sheriff's Office, that number 410-836-5043, or you can call Metro Crime Stoppers. We're live in Hartford County tonight. I'm Lowell. Ladies and gentlemen, that 28-year-old woman uh, happened to be related to a woman that worked with me for a number of years in the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. She used to live in Southeast Washington, D.C. And she worked very hard to make certain that her daughter would not have to suffer remaining in Southeast for the majority of her life. In fact, that young woman made certain that her daughter went off to college but didn't go off to college at the local HBCU. You see, she went off to college at Iowa. Yes, Iowa. Almost 2,500 miles away from Washington, D.C. Her mom used to have to drive with her good friend, Deborah, who is in our chat room this particular evening, to Iowa to drop her daughter off and to pick her up. Now, needless to say, that's a long stretch to drive. And I know, Deborah, it is sad and it is hard to accept. But I remember your stories about how you, you and Brenda drove and, and, and Brenda was sleeping and so was the young lady who was shot and killed sleeping in the back. And you all drove through the wild winds and rains and snows to get her there and to get her back. Because this mother didn't have a whole lot of money, but she worked real hard to make certain that her daughter would have an opportunity. Her daughter graduates from a college in Iowa, and she comes back to the neighborhood. Now, it's something about that. My daughter, Shanice, went to Syracuse and graduated with honors. And for all of you who are listening to us on Red Nation Rise, and God bless you, we know that you have to go away for your station break. We wish you the very best. You can always tune in to SHR Media or the Exceptional Conservative Show uh, or High Plain uh, or HPTalkRadio.com to listen again. Uh, it's up to you, but I recommend highly that you do listen to what I have to say here. I want to thank SHR Media and also HP Talk Radio for carrying us live. We love you. Smooches to you, Dan, and to also you, Sean, Clint, and BZ. But I remember those stories. I am not so old that I find vagary to deplete my memories. Little girl graduated, just like my daughter graduated from Syracuse, and they came back to Washington, D.C., now, parents like us, when we have the opportunity to send our kids away, we really hope that they stay away. We grew up in the hood. We did what we could to educate our children beyond what the hood schools could teach them. Putting them in programs that other people would call them Uncle Toms and Aunt Harriet's because they were in. But you knew that that was the ticket to get out. To Deborah, that young woman was like a daughter. I mean, you don't have to birth them. But if they're around you long enough, you start raising them. You start teaching them what is right and what is wrong. And then when you see the promise in the child, you hope that that promise grows in some other yard and not in the one that you got. But they come back. They come back because they want to change something. They want to make things better. They want to show their parents 
that we can make good of what's so bad. And like a lightning bolt, so quick and without sound, they're taken from us. Why do I do what I do with Pastor Donovan Larkins? Why do I tell you all that even one of my hosts, Shannon and Mike, that host team, one of their nephews is a missing person now. So why do I do what I do with Pastor Darwin Larkins? Because I don't want them to have to go through what I went through. But here's one of the major things that I'm finding out. It happens, just like the young woman that was on that particular video was saying, I, I didn't believe it was going to happen in my neighborhood. I didn't believe it was going to happen to me. We talked, that, talked about that last like the BZ, now didn't we? Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff happens. It doesn't have to. We can be the preventers of that. We can be the stoppers of that. What you can do is not only tell me what I should do in terms of putting stuff up for people to click on, but there is a bright red donation button right next to the chat roll or right above it on TECS. And it says, donate today. Protect the innocent. And all I'm asking you to do is press on that button, $5, $10, $25, 100 And even this, even this, let me tell you, it don't have to be you. If you told family and friends that we're trying to raise $10,000 so that we can give camp support to families and to parents, especially to the children who have suffered from sexual abuse, when, isn't that worth a pizza? Isn't that worth a Big Mac? It, so all I'm saying to you is, we are working with Donovan Larkins. We're trying to raise $10,000, of which $3,000 will go to Syracuse University in the name of Shanice Milton for a scholarship for low-income students. What more do I say? What, what more can I do? How much more can we experience and you not see the need? All I'm asking in this particular moment, in this particular hour, First and foremost, once I'm able to release the name of the mother who just lost her child, I want y'all to know that's so unnatural. I used to hear old people say, that's so unnatural. It really is. In the soul of the person who suffers it, it's unnatural. You should be worrying about where they're going to put you in the old folks' home or how they're going to bury you at the cemetery. You should not be worrying about burying your own children. But I will say this to you, when we are able to put that name out, in fact, I wish everyone would go over to Deborah's page, Deborah Frazier's page right now, because that's not the child's mother, but she helped raise the child. She is going through a grieving process, not like my best friend's daughter has been killed, but my daughter has been killed, and that hurts to the very core who you are as an individual. If everybody would just go over there and say, I love you, Deborah. Y'all want to know all the big words and all the fans. You want to use a whole lot of scripture. Stop. Two things you can say. I love you. And I will be here for you because you need me. Not if you need me. If you, I do need you. I need you to pray for me. I need you to hold me. I need you to... Be there for me while I suffer, and not with your carnal advice from Oprah. I just need some time for you to say, talk to me, and I'll listen. If you all went on over to Deborah and just told her that, even befriend her. I know some of y'all ain't her friend. Y'all don't even know the child. But if some people just went over there and said, you know what? I love you, baby. Let me hook up on you on Facebook. I ain't going to be doing it all that professional public talk to you all in public. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to put no post up there so everybody can see how deep and how beloved I am in the Lord. No, I'm talking about I'm messaging you because I know you're going through. Sister, when you need me, I'm here for you. That's what I'm talking about. You want to change America? First, help Donovan Larkins do what he's doing in Dayton. 
Stop talking about, I ain't got $10,000 again. I ain't asking for that. Give what you can. And if you can't give no more, God bless you anyway. So that Shannon and Mike and their missing person, can't, we put the resources together so we can begin working and finding private detectives to help families like that find their missing person. And for unresolved homicides, that we can start knocking down the door against these politicians that refuse to side with citizens, they prefer to side with the criminal. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about what Jesus talked about. How can you love me and you don't see me and hate the brother that you do see? Don't, don't do, I, ain't, I ain't into church hugging. You know, y'all know church hugging, right? Y'all see it when you see it? I ain't into that. Church hugging is a very empty thing. Please don't offer me one. But this is what I can do. For that mother who's grieving, y'all send a whole lot of flowers. That's a lovely thing. Those will pass away in seven days. But do you need some Popeye's chicken now, six months later? Do you need some shoulder to cry upon? I got two tickets that I'm not going to use. And, you know, I'm thinking maybe you can have one if you want it. You want to be Christ to the world? Love the world the way Christ loved it. And then help us do what's necessary to help so many more. We'll be right back right after these messages. From the war front to the streets of our nation to capital. Men of Faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, It's a New Day, on New Day, Black and Red. Good morning. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, that's not how it goes. I think I'm Shannon, and I you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We right. are The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on SHR Media. And on TECN. Where we'll be talking about all kinds of things. From sports and politics. To food and entertainment. To money. Family. And anything else in between. Community, holidays, all kinds of things. It'll be great. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. With home values up and interest rates near all-time lows, you probably know that now is a great time to refinance. Like the Johnsons, who save $436 a month. $436 a month? It's simple. Just go to LendingTree.com, compare loan offers for free, and see how much you could save in just five minutes. I thought you said the bank gave you the best rate. Yeah. Lending tree. When banks compete, you win. I have to do everything myself. Someone is sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> hey, it's Jersey Joe. Tell the reader common sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. That's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. Hi, my name is Christopher Arnold. I'm the executive chef of Infused Restaurant, and today I'm gonna walk you through some of the meals that we prepare here. Pizza dough is in-house made. Our pizza sauce is in-house made. So everything is fresh. 
Gentlemen, I'm letting you all know you can order it up big time. 6339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland. It's the place to be, baby. That's what I'm talking about. A double all beef burger, eight slices of bacon. Uh, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Infused restaurant. If that description of all doesn't want, garner your taste buds to scream and shout going down the road to get there, certainly if you're vegan. They got stuff there for you, too, okay? I just want to let you know that. Welcome back to the Exceptional Conservative Show. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation. First to the Republican and then the Socialist. Ladies and gentlemen, we are contacting our beloved commentator, uh, who is our official world commentator. Janice Hall, the J-Hall World Report. There's so much going on in the world. All right. Janice? All right. Okay, maybe that's not the right one. We, we'll, we'll, we'll try the other one. We'll try the other one. Okay, here we go. Bingo. We'll, we'll get that one. And that one did not work. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're going to try this one more time. This is amazing. We want this technology to work, people. One ringy dingy, two ringy dingies. Is this Janice Hall, the J Hall World? Hello. Hello. Good evening, Janice. It's a great pleasure to have you on the air with us tonight. Awesome. Thank you. You know, I love being here. I know. I love having you here. And, and and did you get my other message about lovely having you someplace else? <laughs> you did. I did. I think that that could happen. All right. Woo! Now that brings joy. It's like having my daughter home. This brings joy. <laughs> what we're talking about here before we get into the conversation. Uh, as, <laughs> I know you hate dressing up. I know that. Me too. <laughs> I know. But we got to suck it up this weekend. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. It sucks. But <laughs> Next time. Uh, Freedom Fest, though, it, it, you ain't got to worry about that. Uh, Janice Hall, the J. Hall World Report, our, like a daughter to me, uh, our commentator, will be at the Trailblazers Award. Now, I want you all to know, uh, did you register already? No. No. Go ahead and do that before I make this announcement. So, <laughs> y'all know I only had like twenty tickets to this thing that I actually actually uh, I I was graced with thirty tickets. Uh, my staff uh, of hosts will be there. 
uh, Shannon and Mike, Lonnie Poindexter, Ralph Chittums, uh, also Melanie will be there. Deborah, I hope, will still be able to attend um, despite her loss today. Uh, and there are a few other guests who will be at that table, but we're going to spread out because I was given 20 additional tickets uh, out of the kindness of Raynard Jackson for the Trailblazers Award, and those tickets are going swiftly, swiftly, and I do mean swiftly. Uh, and this is without tomorrow any announcements from the other hosts. So I'm going to let y'all know. Uh, there are probably only about eight more tickets left. <laughs> so get your tickets as quickly as you possibly can. Please sign up today. You can do that. A lot of people are going to be asking yourself, where do I do that? Uh, everyone knows she did hers last night. She said, quickly, quickly, I'm done. <laughs> Claudia, love you. Hi, glad to have you here. Mary Brock and my bouncer, if you diss her, you diss me, you will be dismissed. I wish you could come. Uh, but you can easily go to the front page of the Exceptional Conservative Show dot com and you can register there. Uh, it's very quick, very easy. Uh, if you register, you'll have a wonderful time uh, for two events. One's the lunch and the other is the VIP reception. So I encourage you all, go ahead, register, get it done because tomorrow morning, uh, Shannon and Mike will start broadcasting it. Uh, and uh, I'm probably by the end of the morning after Melanie's show, it'll all be over. You won't be able to get any tickets. So do it. Do it quickly. Listen, Janice. Uh, whom we love dearly coming on on Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. Um, I hear tell uh, that there is a certain conservative who's chopping at the bit in France to turn Europe out. And I mean a woman who is more conservative than Donald Trump, who has put the fear of God in people in Europe. Uh, who is this woman, and, and why do people fear her? Really <laughs> <laughs> and um, people see her because, well, she's not their normal socialist, um, globalist uh, candidate that they usually have. Um, she's conservative, they're not as much socially. But she definitely is pretty much anti-EU. She likes to have uh, she likes to have France France have their own referendum on leaving. Mm -hmm. She is not a huge fan of all the Muslims that have been coming into her country <laughs> of late. <laughs> and so, yeah, so people and to, the the problem I think that people are really upset about here is that they see that Brexit happened and they see and, and even though everybody's saying, oh, she's not going to, you know, she's not going to actually be president, she's not going to win completely, she has a good shot and mm -hmm. I mean, nobody thought Brexit was going to happen and nobody thought Trump was going to win. Exactly. Now her daddy, who she supplanted in a legal battle, <laughs> Which tells you how ferocious, I'm telling you, y'all y'all think Trump's, this woman's ferocious. She takes no prisoners. Uh, she supplanted her father in, the, in their political party and locked him out of it. Her father was known as a right-wing kook uh, in Europe uh, and in France, especially. Uh, and I, I'm telling you, she is not too far from the apple or at least a tree. Am, am I right on this one? <laughs> no, she's she's not too far. Um, so her dad was a little bit out there. Um, he was the <laughs> Holocaust denier. She's a little, She's at least you know normal. Um, <laughs> essentially, a lot of the same. Policies mm -hmm. that um, he had, she she is continuing. Exactly. Now, um, Donald Trump has taken a great deal of heat recently uh, because he says that those lazy trifling Europeans need to take up 
their portion of NATO. They need to pay the piper if they want to have protection. What is Marie Le Pen's response to Donald Trump? Well, okay, she herself isn't necessarily a, a huge fan of data either. <laughs> uh, and she thinks that perhaps the money would be better spent working on essentially French uh, defenses, which, considering the fact that they've had a tremendous amount of uh, illegals coming in, might not be a bad idea. <laughs> Might be a very good idea, right about here. But but she she's okay with a military buildup. Am I correct? Yes, yes, she is. I mean, I think she'd like to have um, more police. I think so that she'd like to have some more law thing in France. Uh, she would like to make it, you know. Um, very difficult for illegal to stay in France. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so, I, I want to ask you here. Because yeah, she's I, definitely trying to. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. Finish that, finish that thought. Forgive me. I didn't hear that. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, basically, she is basically trying to wants to restore law and order to France, and I would. She's trying to restore a little sanity as well. There you go. I love that word, sanity. <laughs> it's been missing for at least 70 years. Okay. But, uh, in, in terms of uh, Marie Le Pen, you know, I have a great love for her, a great passion for her, because uh, she sounds more conservative than Margaret Thatcher, and that's saying something. <laughs> that is saying something. <laughs> She said, the globalist choice backed by all my opponents, I mean, the, the presidential election puts two opposite proposals, the globalist choice backed by all my opponents and the patriotic choice when I, uh, which I personally, uh, uh, which, for, forgive me, I personify, forgive me, I misread that, but uh, she's putting the flag around her, she's draping the French flag around her and saying, anyone who's the enemy of me is the enemy of France. Didn't we hear that with Napoleon? <laughs> Hello, Janice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, didn't didn't we hear Napoleon say the very same things that, that she said regarding the fact that she's a patriot and that you need to uh, support me rather than support my enemies? And, I mean, quite frankly, the, the French people should be supporting France. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's generally what we're... Um, like, Americans should be supporting the U.S. And ah. French should be UK. Mm. These things should happen. Wow. So, literally, now we have a... English woman and Theresa May who says Great Britain first. We have Donald Trump that says America first. And then we may have a French president, Marie Le Pen, who says France first. How much longer yeah. will it be before we hear German first? <laughs> Not long. <laughs> it is heading in that direction. Well, we'll probably hear Austria first. Ah, ah, that, I'm but. looking so forward to it. Janice Hall is with us tonight, J. Hall World Report. There's so much that we got to go through this particular evening, but uh, Viva uh, Le Pen, Viva Le Pen, Marie Le Pen, we love you, uh, and we hope that you come to power in France, uh, and, and also that your parliament is abruptly canceled out as well. So, you know, that you have supporters in the parliament, I must say, not... Eliminate it. Um, <laughs> don't snicker. I did not mean. <laughs> it's a little different thing. Yeah. <laughs> I did not mean to overthrow people. That's not what I was talking about. 
Let's go to something else. <laughs> uh, uh, apparently, uh, the Muslims have gotten uh, on uh, Merkel in charge uh, uh, in uh, Germany in trouble. Um, got the French in trouble. Got the Swedes in trouble. Um, but we do know that Muslims show great love. At least this is what the left tells us here at home. Great love for other people's religions. Uh, is that the case that we're talking about right here? I think that's the only reason I'm thinking that no. <laughs> <laughs> you got any proof of that? <laughs> uh, in time of <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, in, in this particular case, apparently uh, a Christian family in Syria is being denied a visa. Is that part of the Muslim ban that we've been hearing about? Um, in this case, uh, not really, because this doesn't really have anything to do with the U.S. Mm -hmm. But essentially, there is a Christian family in Aleppo that applied for a visa to go to Belgium. And that visa was denied. And so now the EU has essentially said Belgium. Mm -hmm. We cannot do stuff. And though we were not particularly happy with this mandate, which, let's be honest, none of us would be. Mm -hmm. Being told what to do and who to let in. And I personally do think that. Belgium shouldn't be able to control who they let in. Mm -hmm. And of all the people you're going to let into your country, it seems that a Christian family from Syria yeah. should be on that list. Exactly. <laughs> of all the people, they should be on that list. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well understood. Um, I, I want to ask you here, and the sense of um, what could possibly happen to that Christian family uh, in that Muslim nation? Uh, is, is, is there something that could, I mean, uh, are they going to be returned back from whence they came? Uh, are they going to be settled in? Uh, is there anything going on from the White House to try to force Syria to accept? The Christian family? That's my knowledge. And as far as I know, you know being a Christian in, in Syria is not the greatest at the moment. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not the end thing. It's very, very good. <laughs> but being anything other than incredibly devout Muslim uh, anywhere remotely close to ISIS is essentially, I mean, not good. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Janice, want to go to another story here because we know what that condition is and we know that the left is misusing it here. Uh, but I want to talk with you about Iran because this is very serious in this country. Um, I don't think they realized that there was an election. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they they took our they, yeah they took our guys off a navy boat uh, and filmed them as they cried tears thinking that they were going to be held captive by the Iranians and that they would receive no support from the commander in chief. Uh, what has Iran been doing over the past couple of weeks to toy with Donald Trump? So Iran over the last couple of weeks has been. They've been antagonizing the Trump administration. Um, they've conducted a, a missile test or two. Um, Khomeini's come out and saying that, you know, his normal bluff during about how, you know, Trump is, you know, mm -hmm. terrible and saying that, you know, Obama was essentially terrible too and I think that perhaps they don't 
perhaps don't fully understand what a change is mm-hmm. when we have our presidential elections. Mm-hmm. I think that apparently Trump said that uh, the Iranians should be should appreciate the fact that Obama was relatively nice to them, which we all know he was. Yeah. And as far as we know, Trump is not showing uh, any inclination to being that nice to them either. Exactly. Exactly. It's, here's, so, here's my question to you. Um, testing ballistic missiles is one thing. Um, but after receiving word not to do it again, uh, that's not a test anymore. That's a provocation. Am I correct? Right. Well, I would, think, I would probably argue that the first test was probably a provocation. <laughs> uh, this is this, this, this it. Exactly. And, and so uh, this is not Donald Trump's fault. This is Barack Obama's fault. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of funny to even read some that Iran is saying about Obama. Um, they say, oh, he wasn't nice. He did all these terrible things like imposing sanctions and, um, you know, <laughs> even creating uh, ISIS and just, just lots of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, they you know, it's terrible, terrible too. Exactly. But I think that they don't understand just how different Trump could possibly be. Exactly. Now, would it be nice of us just to knock one of their boats out of the <laughs> uh, out of the ocean, the Indian Ocean? There, would, would it be nice just to bam, knock it right on out and tell them that the next time you test anything else, you better go through us. Before you do it, should would that be too provocative for the Middle East? Is what I'm asking there. Uh, it might be a little, a little provocative for the Middle East. <laughs> uh, not, not that it you know wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they. I think the been is Iran will probably keep poking at the Trump administration until uh, they hit that back. And I think we'll just have to, to see how far that will go. I'm going to guess that it's not going to go too far. I think Iran to the, you know, the Muslim ban, we're not calling it, mm-hmm. um, was part of that, um, was part of you know, Trump's policy to with Iran. Um, but I think that more in this case is probably going to be needed. They are getting, they're, they're getting pretty full of themselves. Exactly. And, I mean, I guess I can't blame them. I mean, Obama and the EU, like, why not? But, mm-hmm. but I think uh, it, it will have to be taken out of peg or two. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, like, next week. You pull another step like that. <laughs> <laughs> next week you shall know the full glory of the army. And the Navy and the Air Force and Marines. Don't pull that stunt one more time. We will not appreciate it. I want to finally talk with you about one other thing, uh, and, and that's China, uh, of which Professor Michael Jones said tonight on his program, The Underground Professor, uh, that it was stupid for us to allow 40% of our national debt to be owned by China. Um, but apparently, uh, that they don't want a war with the U.S. is one thing. Okay, um, but they are making some, which we've always said was provocative, but they're making some statements and things today that make me concerned uh, for a possible second area for warfare, aside from the Middle East, that uh, Southeast Asia might be that next uh, place. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit more about what China is saying and doing to provoke us? Yes, happy to. So I, I absolutely agree. I don't think it's good for China to hold so much of U.S. debt. Mm-hmm. We don't have that much debt to begin with, and then 
it's not good for China to have it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Now, as for more international relations, um, China came out and said that they don't necessarily want a war with the U.S. And, you know, they'd like to have like, things to be generally peaceful. Um, which I think is interesting that it could be taken a couple of different ways. It could be you could take it at face value and say, okay, China's not particularly interested in, in pressing the Trump administration and possibly creating any kind of conflict. The other way that this could be taken is that China is coming out now and saying it, but they don't want a conflict, mm -hmm. but then essentially should a conflict break out, we will then, with, oh, we said we didn't want one, so clearly it was the U.S.'s fault. Exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, are there some diplomatic things that we can do? Because China is a force to reckon with, although there are at least 10 other countries in Southeast Asia that would love to reckon with them. <laughs> they sick of them in Southeast Asia at this point. Um, will Trump try to work out a good foreign policy with China, thus getting them out of the Southeast, uh, South Asia Sea? Uh, I'm sorry, South, a South Asian Ocean, uh, and at the same time protecting us from economic havoc uh, with China. I think he's probably definitely going to try. I would imagine that it, something happening in the South China Sea might be related to any trade he, he might look into, um, any trade deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely, I definitely think that, that Trump, like everyone, is not going to be so amenable to China sending its vessels into the South China Sea and the islands. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I, I would love to see them work out a deal where they get off of those islands. Um, less they feel the full force of international aggression. Uh, not that we want that. Yeah, I... <laughs> no. And, I mean, realistically, I don't think they're going to leave those islands, mm -hmm. but if they can maybe not create war, at this point, that would be a win. Yeah, exactly. Janice Hall... And, you know, not harass. Other boats. Exactly. Other exactly. Nice it would be nice. It would be nice. But they're, yeah. they're, they're making it difficult for themselves. They really are. They, they really are. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful and brilliant Janice Hall, J. Hall World Report. Uh, and she will be at the Trailblazers weekend this weekend. We hope that you can join us there. there right now, there are only nine tickets left from the last count I looked. Nine tickets left. And that's before the. Uh, other hosts begin announcing it on their shows. Uh, so I, I want you and I encourage you with all of my heart, while you're listening tonight, you already had last night and today a head start of everybody else. Go ahead and get, the sh get those tickets that you can. If you don't get them, they will probably be all gone by tomorrow. Thank you so much for being on with us tonight, Janice. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Listen, Janice Hall is a wonderful thinker, great foreign policy person, uh, and I, I tell you, like a daughter to me. So, I uh, love to have her on, love to listen to her. Ladies and gentlemen, there is excitement about because of the exceptional conservative network. I, I have some of the greatest hardworking uh, individuals uh, who are hosts uh, in the world, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, they make me proud every single day. Uh, one of those persons that makes me very proud uh, happens to be uh, 
Yeah, there are nine tickets left, Professor. There are only nine tickets left. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gave a head start on my program to everybody, so there are only nine tickets left. I wish I had more to give. I do. I, <laughs> I wish I do. See, that's the professor coming in and messing with me. You know, only he, my my, as I am peon in chief to his hosting the New Day Black and Red on Thursday nights here on TECN, uh, and we only allow him one because of affirmative action in the first place, with him being black and everything. So, <laughs> uh, the the bottom line is that I, I was in the midst of talking about something, and then he just directed my attention away from it. And knowing I am not the kind of person that's easily directed back to my original thought, he does that on purpose because that's he's my friend, and only a friend would do that to you. Only a friend would try to knock you off course uh, in terms of what you're doing on your own show. Even though I listen faithfully to his show this evening, okay? That's my friend, the great professor, Dr. Michael Jones. Uh, <laughs> what do you say? I am not a hater. <laughs> I am not a hater. Do I sound like I'm hating on you, professor? No, I am not a hater. I love your program. All the 30 minutes that you can listen to it, you know, on Periscope, you know, I love your program. <laughs> oh, man. And you should be over here in this chat room. Not, not, no, no holding a personal conversation with me. <laughs> you can go if you want to, professor. You don't have to be black to attend. I, listen. 90% of the black people that will be attending are Uncle Tom's to begin with. So, you fit right in. <laughs> um, but, yes, let me get back to what I was going to say. Tomorrow, this is what makes me very proud of Melanie. Before I go to my break. I only have three minutes before I go to my break. Um, and there are not enough minutes in the day to tell you how great Melanie is. <laughs> See? Did I make up for the commercial, Melanie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's white privilege to be here. Thank you, sir. I <laughs> only you, only you. Uh, Melanie tomorrow will have a huge guest on her program at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, Money talk with Melanie. Uh, live from Jersey, she will have Ebony Williams. Now, Ebony Williams is that brilliant and beautiful young lady who you will see on uh, the O'Reilly Factor. You will see her on the Five. You will see her on, uh, I believe it's the women's thing that they do with a corner guy at noontime. Uh, well, she will be on that particular program tomorrow. Yes, two beautiful women, two brilliant women, Melanie Collette and Ebony Williams together at 10 a.m. And what a wonderful conversation they're going to have. And I'm encouraging everybody in here, everybody. And if you have never been uh, or don't know about Money Talk um, with Melanie, I'm going to give you her Facebook page. Okay. Well, you couldn't find anything with Money Talk. Okay, i got to figure this out here. Money Talk with Melanie. You can tell I really put this thing together real quick. Okay. Erase that. But 10 a.m. tomorrow, Money Talk with Melanie. Melanie will be here. Uh, she will be interviewing... Uh, none other than the brilliant and vivacious Ebony Williams. I'm looking forward to the conversation. And then on Thursday, uh, things are going to be worked out. Um, Willie Lawson on his 9 a.m. show will be in introducing and in uh, to his network, uh, well, to our network, Mason Weaver. Uh, so there's some great guests coming up on our program. We encourage you to stay with us. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, as we come back from the break, uh, we will be talking about 
Trailblazers. And I have a special announcement to make regarding that. Not just about the tickets, which are going so fast, but I have a very special announcement to make regarding that. Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time-consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media, and analyze results, sign up with eClincher today. My name is Christopher Arnold. I'm an executive chef of Infused Restaurant, and today I'm gonna walk you through some of the meals that we prepare here. So we're making a pizza. We use a fresh Italian sausage that we cook here and slice it up. Our pizza dough is in-house made. Our pizza sauce is in-house made. So everything is fresh and ingredients. This is our Thai curry chicken. Uh, the sauce is made with coconut milk and the Thai red curry. It is juicy chicken thighs as well as some mixed vegetables. Served with jasmine rice and pita bread. We're going to prepare our famous blackened tilapia and grits, our fish and grits on the menu. Once the fish is ready, then our meal will be complete. Let me tell you about our infused sea burger. When we kick the spice up just a little bit with our infused sauce, we start off with 80-20 USDA ground chuck, ham patty burgers, nice half a pound of burgers, and we're going to grill it to perfection. After I flip the burger, we add the sauce and let it cook on into the meat just a little bit. Add a little bit of pepper jack cheese to this burger, spice it up a bit. What are up? Ladies and gentlemen, 6339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland. It is the place to be. Up and interest rates near all time lows. You probably know that now is a great time to refinance. Like the Johnsons, who save $436 a month. $436 a month? It's simple. Just go to LendingTree.com, compare loan offers for free, and see how much you could save in just five minutes. I thought you said the bank gave you the best rate. Yeah. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. I have to do everything myself. Someone is sleeping on the couch tonight. From day's first light till night's last glimmer, 
your satisfaction is our responsibility. On the range or in the field of duty, you can rely on Brownell's lifetime guaranteed gun parts, tools, and supplies anytime, any place. That's how we've done business since 1939. Brownells. Ladies and gentlemen, the next commercial is dedicated to Melanie's dog, Alpo. Want to know the best kept secret in flea and tick control? It's the money you'll save with 1-800-PET-MEDS. Save 30, 40, even 50% on veterinary recommended brands for your pet. And we'll deliver them free right to your door. And now you can get the safe and effective results of a top brand for even less with new Flea for X Plus. Four-way action to kill fleas, ticks, lice, and mosquitoes. Plus, it starts working in five minutes to one hour and is backed by our 100% happy guarantee. Call now or order online from 1-800-PET-MEDS. Meet Jason. He was really ex all right. Uh, apparently, this thing that I have doesn't want me to play this. Hey, it's Jersey Joe. Tony Reaver, Common Sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. That's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for tuning in tonight and listening to the Exception Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation first to the Republican, and then the Socialist. Uh, I have such great joy of working with so many great people. Uh, <laughs> I do. I have great joy working with so many great people, uh, whether it's Ralph uh, and Lonnie. They have a new call-in portion of their program. Now you can call in to their radio program and talk with them from any part of the world. Whatever your commentary is, you can call into their show. I would encourage you. To listen on drive time afternoons from 4 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, to listen to the right guys. Uh, and like all men, we are never wrong. We're always right. Uh, and especially if you're conservative, you're always right. Uh, so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to our program. So glad that you're listening here. And also stay tuned for the drive time morning program uh, where... Uh, we'll we'll be talking with Shannon hopefully tomorrow night if if uh, the diva is available to talk with us now that she's big time uh, and she's going on the Roland Martin show now on Friday morning so uh, that opens up to the announcement I was going to make regarding the Trailblazers weekend. Um, Lonnie, uh, forgive me, um, Willie will not be on the air live on Friday either. Uh, Shannon and Mike will not be live on the air either, uh, as Shannon is on the Roland Martin show. So what I'm going to do, uh, and with their permissions, remember now, I want you all to understand. Melanie, I hope you're listening so you can repeat this uh, <laughs> to everybody who's a host. All the good people here, I want you to be able to repeat it to every single person uh, that I did ask permission of Willie and Shannon and Mike to do this on Friday and they said yes okay it was not one of those Don Vito kind of things where I called them up and said I'm taking over your show on Friday I didn't do that because you know I'm not that kind of person am I Mary no I'm not that kind of person I'm a lovable teddy bear of a man so <laughs> Even more than Ken's clock, forget you, Dave. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Mamba who said that. Okay, forgive me, Mamba. It's okay for you to say that. <laughs> One day I'm going to have that clock fixed. That clock will work, like clockwork. It, it will. Um, but on Friday morning from 7 to 10 a.m., yours truly, the exceptional one, Ken McClinton, will be doing a very special, the exceptional conservative show. Uh, and I will be interviewing three of the great trailblazers to be honored this particular weekend. One at 7, 10, the, the other at 8, 10, 
and the last at 910. I will be interviewing three of them uh, on that particular program. So on Friday morning, uh, going into Melanie's show, would you do me the earnest favor? Since I am not the most endearing morning person, I'm more enduring than endearing uh, morning person, would you be there with me uh, from 7 to 10 a.m.? as we're doing a very special, a very, very special uh, exceptional conservative show, Trailblazers. It's not going to be a pre-record either. This is us live. You know I do the nighttime thing, but I'm going to do morning on Friday from 7 to 10. I'm going to interview three of them, uh, and I hope that you enjoy the conversations that we have. Please tell all your friends and family uh, it is not uh, a pre-record that you're listening to. It's Ken McClinton live, uh, and so I'm greatly honored. Uh, you heard nothing, boy. Uh, quickly, they throw you under the bus. Isn't that something? Uh, <laughs> it's all. It's not about Ken. That you know, it's not. It's not about Wah. It's about the Trailblazers. Ken, Ken, Ken. It's not. <laughs> it's not three hours of Ken. I'm offended by those remarks. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk with you about why I find trial plays are so important. I know that I only have about a few more moments with you. Uh, I don't want to go over uh, as it is Tuesday night, and BZ will be following me right after this show. So you need to stay uh, with Spreaker. Uh, go to shrmedia.com, shrmedia.com to listen to BZ's show. Um, I want to talk with you about what I'm going to do it from the writings that I had. It's been a very successful week with this writing. Um, but the Black Republican Trailblazer Awards, they were separate and unequal event. Rivers have often been the source of great inspiration in literature. The very power of the creator is witnessed in the ebb and flow of these pristine waters. The, farmers, the farmer reaches his hands into the very fertile earth. It blesses the nations with the fruit born of the river sea. Beyond the natural expression, rivers have been the symbols of time elapsed, never to be recovered. A painful sense of loss or even lives passing into oblivion. In Washington, D.C., two rivers flow, the Anacostia and the Potomac. The Anacostia Anacostia has always represented the despair felt by the poor, the hopelessness of the miseducated, and, the, and those forgotten and dreams deferred. The Potomac has always been the privilege of wealth, the luxury of networking in ivory towers, and the expectation of the laurels of nobility. Rivers divide men of war and men of peace. When it comes to black trailblazers, a river divides two men in honoring great men and women in the Republican history. The violent ebb and flow of wills have left one alone in, in awarding the least, the last, and the lost, and the other with the might of the nation's executive office to award well-healed and well-connected. The unfortunate result of this mighty battle of wills has left many worthy candidates without merit. In a month of reverence for the lives of Frederick Douglass, Carter G. Woodson, and a host of modern greats, trailblazers have been made separate and unequal. On one side of the river, a man stands isolated from the herd. Some believe that he is arrogant and woefully unyielding of credit to others for their past labors in establishing and promoting the Black Republican Trailblazers Award. None will even question his sincere efforts or his intellectual property rights. However, he's not a team player. He has often said in public that the only way that the GOP will recognize a Black Republican as if they are a socialist Democrat. He has questioned the lack of a black agenda by black Republicans that seem naked, although they proclaim imperial robes as they stumble behind President Donald Trump, hoping that they can convince him that they have direct access to Chicago gang members. He has wondered aloud how the best can be considered for governmental posts, and none of them happen to be black. He has often questioned why such great black Republicans like K. Cole James, former director of the United States, of, of the United States Office of Personnel Management under George W. Bush, and Frederick McClure, chief executive of the Bush Library Foundation, are not called upon more for advice and counsel amongst public policy mavericks. 
He isolate he idolizes them so, admiring their sacrifice for God and country. Yeah, Ken, but you don't know how condescending and arrogant he is. He makes comments like this. It wasn't until I created the Black Republican Trailblazers Awards five years ago that anything meaningful was ever done under the Republican label to acknowledge Black History Month. Now the party is even trying to steal that from black folks by way of a lawsuit, which most of you are aware of. Yeah, he's a cocky somebody now, isn't he? However, how many Trailblazer Awards were there before this little man stepped forward? Or here's a better question. How many years did it take before the people he admired chose the comforts of power, wealth, and influence of the party and walked away from him? The challenge founder of the Black Republican Trailblazer Awards perseveres even as the man on the opposing riverbank influences black Republicans to avoid him like the plague and stay with the team. What could the founder possibly do for you? Simply, what can a black Republican that seeks to honor black Republicans that have been overlooked and forgotten possibly do for you? Miss Imaginary Name, uh, please bring me a checkbook and let's see what it takes to divide and conquer. On the other side of the river stands a man that believes party matters. As more and more blacks are moving towards a conservative voting perspective and away from the socialist Democrat plantation, the GOP wants to show that it can be a place that honors heritage while pursuing the best course of legacy. Even more encouraging is the revelation that 14% of black men voted for President Trump. Do they have an official plan of action to help convert individuals from Trump supporters to becoming Republicans? I doubt it. Understand that this is the calamity of not being prepared for what you wish. The man on this side of the river understands that this is not merely a luncheon for elders to consort pictures to be taken, a few rehearsed words to be spoken, and remembrances archived. This is a stake for the political future of the party. We know that the party, or at least most of its membership, does not believe in identity politics. We are all Americans. However, it doesn't take a civil engineer to recognize that there is a breach in the Socialist Democrat Party dam. A black Republican should have only one interest, the party. But Ken, we have an outreach center in Detroit. Okay, back to the essay. During the Thursday, February 2nd, 2017, RNC African American Leaders Update call, GOP leaders joyfully spoke of their plans for Black History Month. K. Cole James, a woman who was to be honored this year by that arrogant little guy on the other side of the river, but declined so that her famous, infamous, Gloucester Institute in Gloucester, Virginia will act as host of the Republican Party's Black Republican Trailblazer Awards is taking a leadership role. Republican National Committee Chairwoman Rona Romney McDaniel will be called on to deliver words of encouragement. While at Holly Knowles, those blacks attending will be responsible for preparing a black agenda to present to President Trump. I suppose Chicago gang leader delegates will be invited as well. It seems so well planned and inclusive of Republicans of note and power. When will this take place? February 24th through the 26th. Hmm, why is that Renaissance Weekend date so important? It is important because most Republicans, black, white, brown, or yellow, will be at the National Harbor in Prince George's County, Maryland, for the Conservative Political Action Conference, yes, CPAC. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to end it there but I hope that you get the gist of why I am so pro trailblazers this year. They have used their power and influence to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned to shrmedia.com for BZ on Bobcats. Berserk Bobcat, that is. If you don't remember anything I said this particular evening, I want you to remember this, ladies and gentlemen. God bless America. It's time now for America to bless God. Good night and God bless to each and every one of you.